Hello, Wanderers. Welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Lord Titus of House Peak. And as you can see, our wife has given birth to a son and an heir. We simply need to pick a name, and I have decided to name him Urathon, which is a legendary founder or one of the legendary members of House Peak from the age of the first men. Uh, Urathon, the shield breaker. Not much is known about the story, but we can imagine he probably broke some, broke some shields in his time. So uh, that is what we are going to name our son. He doesn't have any traits or anything like that, but he did inherit that Valyrian uh, hair color. And uh, I think that that's pretty cool. I mean, like I said, everybody wants to get that Valyrian blood in there in their lines when they play uh, Game of Thrones. So uh, I think it's I think it's neat and it's going to make for an interesting character when Urathon takes over eventually. Some big events happened. Uh, probably, I don't know if it was just after the tournament. I'm guessing on the way home from the tournament. But as you can see, Queen Marcella of the Iron Throne, indeed, King Robert was uh he died under mysterious circumstances and uh, i don't think we need to draw too many conclusions to assume that probably tywin lannister was behind that they were rivals and you know robert was responsible for executing cersei upon finding out about her and uh jamie so probably it was tywin uh, it appears that Stannis has managed to move into the position of regent of the of the throne here. It probably suspects that Marcella may not be uh, Robert's actual daughter. So we'll see if Stannis tries to solidify his position. You know, if he tries to get himself into, you know, that permanent regency position. Curious to see how that'll play out. But this would cause a lot of chaos within the realm. I mean, you know, even if it's not 100% known that Robert was assassinated, it's probably, you know, people are suspicious, mysterious circumstances, right? He obviously didn't die of natural causes. So, you know, people are probably drawing some conclusions. I don't think that it would be a stretch to imagine that some of the lords may imagine that Tywin's responsible, but... It's not like Robert didn't have other enemies. Uh, curious to imagine what Stannis would do in this position with his, you know, he didn't have any lost love for Robert. Uh, but now, you know, finding himself in this position of power, you know, he's only 27 years old, uh, but he is still that, you know, a stubborn, callous, cynical man, but just, you know, so it's curious to see. How this is all going to to play out but yeah this is going to cause some the you know tensions in the realm are going to be pretty high and i feel like the attorney at longbow hall uh you know if we imagine that robert was killed you know maybe let's imagine that something may have happened like he was killed while traveling through the gates of the moon or something like that and you know maybe uh it was set up to look like some of the mountain clansmen came down and kill him, killed him, but it was really an assassination. I can imagine that might be something that Tywin Lannister would attempt to pull off. Uh, you could imagine that the tourney of Longbow Hall will be something well known and remembered, much like the tourney at Heron Hall, which you know was kind of precipitous towards starting the War of the Usurper. We'll see if this leads to civil war or just machinations within the realm uh but yeah really things are things are going to be tense things are going to be pretty heated and the lords paramount and all the lords are going to be considering you know what they're going to do should the realm descend into war and chaos again a mere what 10 less than 10 years after the last civil war so we'll see how that all plays out we do have a new lifestyle perk Finally, we get our first um, perk in the Intrigue Tree. And I, I want to go after the Spy Network one, 
because I've never used it before. I don't even actually know how it works. So I'm curious to see how the spy network thing goes. Like, can we, do we just go into the court of our rival here and try to find people who would become our spies? Like, can we get his acclaimed knight to become a spy? Uh, recruit a spy. Okay, okay. So that's how we do it. We got to find some people probably who might not like him or, you know, I wonder if his Septon would, could be recruited as a spy. Yeah, so people, so our intrigue skill gives us a big bonus, but we got to look for people. Okay, so probably people who are deceitful because just is going to reduce it. Uh, their opinion, base reluctance. So maybe if we get somebody who's like deceptive or disloyal or something like that, we might have a chance. So let's see. I'm just gonna take a moment to like look through his court and see if we can find anybody who might uh, might be possible to recruit. All right, so I did find one person who we might be able to get in there if we can offer him a bribe. Uh, it's minus 23. But I think a bribe might be able to, to get us to that point. We'll see. Uh, we might need some more perks and stuff. But uh, either way, we should, uh, we should be able to save up some money in the meantime. Another thing I would like to do is try to figure out what we can, how we can convince Mace Tyrell to, to grant us a high lordship. Uh, we're going to try swaying him. We're going to get him onto our side as much as possible. If we can get a friendship with him, um, if we can, you know, maybe win some more tournaments, maybe do something important within the realm, uh, get some strong allies. To that extent, uh, I have actually arranged for a betrothal between our daughter Ellen and the son and heir of our friend uh, Lord Carrick of Middleton. So we actually got that alliance now with Middleton, which is good. I wanted to kind of keep uh, Lord Carrick in here. If we do get a high lordship, I may have Lord Carrick uh, essentially swear swear his house to House Peak, even though they're far away. I don't think that that's unheard of in the Game of Thrones. Like, I don't think necessarily in the Game of Thrones universe, all the lords that would swear each themselves to different houses were like attached to each other like they normally are in the game. I don't think it would be unheard of for, say, you know, somebody to swear to a house that's like a little bit farther away. I think that would just be cool and pretty fitting considering he is loyal and that loyalty goes to House Peak. Um, so we uh, we shall see. But first, we need to get that. How are we going to get that? Like I said, if we can win over Mace Tyrell and maybe if we can get some powerful lords in the Reach to speak good on our behalf. Well, how are we going to do that? Probably by alliances. Who are the most powerful lords of the Reach? Well, obviously House Tyrell. And then second to them only is House Hightower. Can we get an alliance with House Hightower? Well, I do believe that we can by arranging a marriage between the son and heir of Lord Baylor Brightsmile and our daughter, Jane. Ooh, will not accept. It's so close. Is there anything we can do to increase these chances? Grand wedding, we obviously can't afford that. Uh, let's see. Marrying down. We have too many existing alliances. Hmm. Can we... I mean, the alliance with these guys over here is not really that that useful to us. I'd love to be able to break our alliance here. Ugh, no, unfortunately we can't. Uh, so we're going to need to... You know what? Maybe we need to sway Baylor instead. So yeah, we're gonna go and we're gonna sway Baylor. We'll try to get that uh, betrothal here. We don't need too much. A fourteen. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, we need to get his opinion of us up. If we can get it up high enough, 
I think we might be able to get over that uh, that hump there and get if if we can get an alliance with an old with Old Town and they are vouching for us, that might do a lot to help us kind of sway over Mace Tyrell here. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Uh, let's see, is there anything else we need to do? Accolades lack successors. Can we, uh, I mean, we can't get one here because we have to hire that knight. What about this? Seek a worthy accolade successor, there we go. And we'll bring in another knight into our court. We probably won't have the money to hire him, but that is just what it is. Unfortunately, money is going to be difficult for us. Uh, we're not making very much and we don't have any lords that are have sworn fealty to us, so. And we can't really go after our third castle, White Grove, until we have a high lordship because we'll be over our domain holding limit and that's just gonna cause us all sorts of problems. Ah, we have a knight here who uh, can fit in to that position. Let us do so. We're gonna put you as the successor. And that seems uh, perfectly fitting there. We could get a loan from the Iron Throne. Um, I don't know though, I don't know if we'll do that. I would like for your knight, Boris Chancewell, to become the squire of Desmond Laxley. Uh, okay, I guess we can have uh, one of our men become, you know, be trained as a knight. That seems fine. I still have, you know, a goal to get ourselves as the Knight of Garland Tyrell here, but uh, there's a minus 12, so we need to increase Marcel. What has happened to <laughs> Stannis is sick? Oh, that's unfortunate for, for Stannis here. I wonder if somebody's been spiking Stannis's food too. Does he have any rivals? He does not. But he has a friend, Donald of House Swan. Yeah, I mean, if Stannis goes, I mean, obviously Tywin's gonna be position positioning himself to, you know, take that regent position. We'll see if he's able. I mean, I wonder if he can do so. I have no idea. Invitation to Lord Russell's feast. Oh yeah, let's go to a feast. I. I'm truly thankful for the Tours and Tournaments DLC uh, because I think the Game of Thrones mod, it's amazing. It is so well done, so much detail. Everything in it is awesome. But it, it just really... Uh, oh, well, we left the time running and we won't arrive to the feast in time. Uh, unless we, what, maybe if we can hire a forest guide? Still, no, unfortunately. We, we won't get there fast enough. Unless we maybe... Pick somebody with a better speed. Michael Josso? I mean... No, apparently, apparently will not, uh, will not work. We'll put uh, Alador back into his position there. He's, uh, they're annoyed that we're switching it up, but uh, it is, it is what it is. We're gonna miss the feast. But we need to save up money anyways. My daughter Jane has been invited to a gathering of peers by Lord Horace. She was, packed, she was packed and ready and clearly excited to leave. Oh, you know what? I'm not opposed to her going off to the arbor in order to, you know, meet some of the the young lords. Maybe she'll maybe she'll happen to meet, you know, the son of uh, lo the Lord of Hightower here. So very well. I, sh I am totally fine with that. We can declare wars, Manderfields, Orchard Way. What about, we can, oh, Ellen Risley's claims. Is that our mother? Yeah, our grandmother. Huh, interesting. I wonder if she had it, if it would go through her son to us. It might. She's got a couple claims too. Lit Risley Glade, Windflower, and Daisy Field. Uh, I don't think we're gonna push quite that far though. 
Uh, I'm going to raise our daughter ourselves, though, for now anyways. So there we go. Yeah, we're going to just kind of let events play out and see see how things happen here. Oh, what? Region has changed. Lord Paramount Stannis is replaced by Lord Tywin as your liege's new regent. So is Stannis dead? Stannis is imprisoned by Lord Tywin. So Tywin must have done a scheme, I guess, to usurp the place of Stannis as the regent. Okay, that is interesting. So Stannis is imprisoned by Tywin. Tywin is now the regent over Queen Marcella, who is you know, uh, a Lannister really through and through. Um, she's probably not uh, going, well, she won't be able to have, well, she might potentially be able to have children. That's only minus 50%. So very curious. So, wow. All right. So that's interesting though. This is not necessarily playing out, you know, like how it is in the books, but there are some parallels to like what actually happened in in the books here so yeah look at, oh my god Tywin is responsible for so many people's death I mean it's all the Tarbex and the rains but my god he is uh, but even after the rains he's still Craycall and Hillscroft yeah wow uh so Lord Tywin the Worthy taking that position as the the regent over Queen Marcella here. And and Stannis is in prison. Well, now, hmm. How's this all going to play out? What's Tywin going to do with Stannis? Is he going to release him? I That wouldn't be wise, but, you know, the AI. Oh, OK, the AI did did release him. He probably made him pay a ransom, I imagine. I don't know. Did he lose any money there? Uh, I propose a betrothal between my daughter and your marshal. Um, <laughs> he's 50 years older than your daughter, but uh, sure. I mean, all right. Uh, if that's what you think is best, uh, you know, I don't know about that, but uh, we'll we'll accept, I suppose. Okay, so Tywin ousted ousted Stannis, but you know what? I I feel like it makes more sense that rather than Tywin releasing Stannis, I imagine this is Stannis, you know, being broken free. Maybe, you know, um maybe it was the Onion Knight who uh who freed Stannis from the dungeons. Uh, I could imagine, uh, something like that happening. I wonder if, uh, Sir Davos is actually in, uh, in his court. Curious, where is Davos? Maybe we'll go and, we'll go and look for him later, but, yeah, I'm very, very curious to see how this is gonna play out. Now, you know, Stannis is the, you know, has been ousted from this position, Tywin on here. Is Stannis gonna start a rebellion? Uh, you know, mechanically within the game, it's it's highly unlikely that he is going to. I am tempted. We'll let the events play out for a little bit, but I'm tempted to, you know, go in and, and spur this a little bit. Uh, just simply because I feel like it would make a lot of sense. Like, you know, Stannis... And I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments, because here's my problem with the Game of Thrones mod, and we're going to talk about this for a moment. It is an, a, such an amazing mod. The Tours and Tournaments DLC adds a ton of stuff going on in the peacetime, but the mod is incredibly stable. Everything except for North of the Wall is just one big empire, and whoever runs the empire has a ridiculous amount of troops, and I haven't really seen that many rebellions or anything like that pop up. Uh, you know, it's not it's not that common. Uh, I think that's just a mechanical thing with the game. 
you know, the Lords, the, the various AI characters judge how successful they could be uh, against, you know, their opponents. And so, you know, with 13,000 troops, Stannis, you know, the AI says it's not going to bother trying to start a rebellion because it knows it can't win. Uh, obviously, the the uh, personality summaries here do affect that. Like Stannis is a god, godless villain, so he's very crueler, very cruel. He can use hostile schemes such as murder, punish punish prisoners with execution and torture, join his agents. Uh, he's also very cynical, blah blah blah. So like this does affect it, and it can uh, cause characters to be a little bit more rebellious and things like that. But I have not really seen that happen in Game of Thrones mod that much, just because it is very stable. Now, I think, considering how all these events are playing out, and, you know, a lot of this is just the AI, you know, doing doing what it was, I, I think that there's a case to be made for us spurring Stannis into a rebellion. I think that that's going to make things really interesting. But I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are on in the comments because, you know, I don't like to manipulate events too much, but I also want to keep the story interesting. I want to keep interesting things happening. I'm okay if we do like 10%, you know, playing with the, you know, playing with the AI, making things interesting things happen, like what we did with uh, Jamie Lannister, bringing him back and take him out of Kingsguard because it makes sense. I never want to do anything that doesn't make sense for the story and like how the random events are playing out. But if there are things that are happening that just would make the story way more interesting and are justified by the events of the game, I think that it's okay to go in and, and kind of cause that to happen. We're adding an element of storytelling to what is otherwise a random game. And for those of you who play Dungeons and Dragons, that's, and I, I am someone who plays a lot of Dungeons and Dragons as a dungeon master. And that's kind of my general rule as a dungeon master as well. I like the randomness of the dice rolls and the things that happen within the, the game and just what the chaos that the players can cause. But as the Dungeon Master, you want to influence events a little bit to keep the story rolling, to keep interesting things happening. And I kind of see myself as a, a little bit of a Dungeon Master when I'm doing these roleplay series. So, like I said, I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on that. I think it's pretty justified that, uh, you know, after being ousted as regent, you know, considering that Marcella is probably suspected to be the daughter of Jamie and Cersei, and Tywin ousted Stannis from that position. Stannis escapes, he retreats to the Stormlands. He's not just gonna sit there and be a nice, good vassal of Marcella. I just don't think that makes a lot of sense. But like I said, I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments of me going in and kind of manipulating those events a little bit. So. Uh, we'll see how that uh, all plays out. But in any case, Titus, this cat has to go. My wife, Lady Valena, is holding mittens up by the skin of his neck, eyes red and nose running. I can't stand this anymore. I can barely breathe when he isn't around. Uh, we should, we can give our cat to one of our, uh, I mean, I don't think we want to, We. she is our lover. So, you know, who, we'll give it to Lord Herndon. There we go. Herndon can have a cat. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm really curious to see what you guys think. I, I feel like most people probably will agree that it would make a lot of sense that Stannis would start a rebellion here in this case. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, say, somebody like uh, Eddard Stark were to, were to join in with that. You know, the Honorable Lord Stark uh, probably... Ah, I mean, this is practically, you know, this is similar to what happened uh, in the actual books, right? Like when Eddard discovers that, and this is actually almost exactly what happens in the book. Eddard discovers that Joffrey and Marcella um, are not Robert's children. 
And he realizes that, you know, because none of Robert's children are his own, that the throne actually belongs to Stannis. And he's going to go and he's going to present that to the lords. Obviously, we know what happens after that. I'm pretty sure, considering the circumstances here, that Eddard Stark would back Stannis in... If if Stannis were to present this case and, and go and and push forward his claim, technically he is the rightful heir. So I'm pretty sure that Lord uh that Eddard would definitely be backing this. I'm curious to, you know, what would Hoster Tully think? He's honorable, diligent, gregarious, he's got that alliance with Stark. Um, you know, I'm curious if I think he would probably I think he would probably side with, uh, you know, with the Starks and with Stannis. I don't think he really probably really cares much for Stannis, but, you know, they're the rivalry, you know, Tully, Lannister, their lands are, you know, close. I, I feel like Riverlands might back uh, Stannis in this. Uh, who's currently ruling the Vale? Lord Sarman of the Vale. I imagine the Vale is probably going to stay out of it. Uh, obviously, if we do kind of spur spur this, I'm just hypothesizing here. Uh, if we do spur Stannis into a rebellion, uh, some of these lords might uh, go and make their own decisions on this. But like I said, I imagine Vale's probably going to stay out of it. Uh, the Reach, tough to say. Tough to say. Like I said, we're just hypothesizing here. I'll let time run so, uh, you know, we can have some events pop up. But yeah, if in this hypothetical situation, uh, is Lord Mace backing? Uh, I, I imagine Mace is either staying out of it or he is backing the throne. I don't see him as joining up on Stannis's side. Doesn't really make sense. Dorn? Uh, Dorn, on the other hand... Uh, I mean, probably, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Dorne. They probably still have a little bit of a, a rivalry with, you know, Stannis and them just because of the whole thing with the, with the, the Targaryens and when they were ousted. I feel like Dorne would probably stay out of this and would be looking for a chance to, you know, they'd be waiting to see. Dorne wouldn't act quickly, especially not Doran Martell. Uh, that's how I see it playing out, you know. Uh, the North, the Riverlands, and Stannis teaming up, uh, up, going up against the, you know, the Westerlands and possibly the Reach, and then the rest of, you know, maybe whoever else signs up, and probably the Vale and Dorn, uh, Dorn staying, uh, staying out of it. So Iron Islands, well, <laughs> what are they going to do when all chaos is insane? They're just going to go and raid and go, uh, pirating on everybody. So who's currently leading the Iron Islands? Uh, let's take a look here. It is Quillen Greyjoy here. So, but he's pretty old. Looks like his, uh, looks like Balon's probably going to take over relatively soon. I could imagine Balin, uh, you know, trying to form his independent kingdom here if uh, Chaos descends. So, like I said, uh, curious to see what you guys think. But uh, if events do go, you know, could be very interesting. And it's going to add a little bit more to the story. So, I know I just spent, what, 10 minutes? <laughs> 10 minutes talking about that hypothetical situation. But in any case, uh, it was a fun little thread to follow. I am several cups of spiced wine in at this meal, and I would normally by now be quite merry. Unfortunately, Wyman Manderley is here. What is he? Why is he here? Uh, we must have gone... You know, I imagine maybe there's something happening here at King's Landing. We've probably all gone there, and uh, Wyman happens to be here as well. All it takes is the merest hint of a slight from his mouth, and we're leaning across the surface, pointing fingers and shouting at the top of our voices. You bastard, you snakey bellows. You couldn't best a child in a test of strength. I could pin your arm to the wood right now with nary an effort <laughs> expended. Uh, yeah, let's see. Prove it, you bampet. 
Ooh, we could gain the nickname Strong Arm. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's <laughs> prove it. Well, Wyman, yeah, he's like, he's talking smack at us. I mean, obviously we're gonna win. He's twice our age and we are a renowned warrior, but I would love to gain this nickname, so. There we go, we best Lord Wyman and we are now Lord Titus, the strong arm of Starpike. Ah, that's a pretty good nickname. Uh, you are at all times ready to throw hands, mostly because you know you'll win. That's true. Coming up to play, I'm sure Carrick's relationship with his spouse Jamala is a very happy and productive one, but lately he has less and less time to spend with me, a dear friend, as their relationship deepens. Oh, I wonder if they're, uh, if they're falling in love. Oh, wow, Carrick's got a bunch of friends. House Roseworth, uh, Master Andrick of Plenimer. He has a rival, too, Halyard. Ooh, okay. Uh, in any case, uh, I miss the good old days when we would have ourselves a great night watching the local drunkards fall over and embarrass themselves. The times we had, if only that wretched, abhorrent Jamila was in keeping us from having them. Uh, yeah, you know, women getting in the way of friendship apparently is not uh, something Lord Titus appreciates here. Uh, perhaps I can see the air of their ways. I suppose we have both moved on. Um. Uh, huh, 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 um. The relationship is irreparably broken. It's an intrigue challenge. Uh, let's, you know what? A wedge is driven between them. So, you know what? This is our deceitful nature coming out. And I think that it's, it's fitting uh that you know we are you know not we're not like jealous or possessive or anything but i think that we just you know we come we rely on lord we rely on carrick a lot and to see him kind of getting distracted with other things i think would kind of be frustrating and annoying to uh someone like uh lord titus here so yeah, so we kind of drive a little bit of a wedge uh, in between the two. So, I mean, things are really getting interesting, not only in the realm up here, but you know, while we are kind of plotting and planning what we do next year, ooh, a grand tournament. Oh, we could host a grand tournament. Well, we won't because we don't have the money for it. In any case, yeah, things in our own plans are simmering we need time to gain these alliances to to oh wow wow baylor uh, lost a leg wonder what happened there uh in any case we need time to make our plans go through but in the meantime things in the iron throne and in the seven kingdoms getting really heated we're gonna see how that all plays out in the next episode until then thank you for watching